Yeah. The disappointment. Disappointment can be a very destructive emotion if you don't deal with it quickly. Disappointment is the devastating feeling of being let down or that you're going to miss out on something forever. Anything that makes you feel sad or defeated as a result of expecting more that you get in is disappointing. The message disappointment offers you is that an expectation you have had a goal you were really going for is probably not going to happen, so it's time to change your expectations to make them more appropriate for this situation and take action to set and achieve a new goal immediately. And that is the solution. Immediately figure out something you can learn from this situation that could help you in the future to achieve the very thing you were after in the first place. Set a new goal, something that will be even more inspiring and something you can make immediate progress toward. Third, realize that you may be judging too soon. Often the things you're disappointed about are only temporary challenges, very much like the story of Billy Joel in Chapter 2. As I've said, you and I need to remember that God's delays are not God's denials. You may just be in what I call lag time. People often set themselves up for disappointment by having completely unrealistic expectations. If you go out today and plant a seed, you, you can't go back tomorrow and expect to see a tree. Exactly. It takes time. It takes time to, to grow a tree and grow a bush. It takes more time to grow a tree. The fourth major solution to dealing with disappointment is to realize that the solution isn't over yet and develop more patience. Completely reevaluate what you truly want and begin to develop an even more effective plan to achieving it. The most powerful antidote to the emotion of disappointment is cultivating an attitude of positive expectancy about what will happen in the future regardless of what has occurred in the past. The ultimate disappointment that we can experience is usually expressed as the emotion of guilt. Seven. The emotion of guilt, regret and remorse are among the emotion human beings do most to avoid in life. And this is valuable. They are painful emotions for us to experience. But they too serve a valuable functions, function. One which becomes apparent once we hear the message. Message guilt tells you that you have violated one of your own highest standards and that you must do something immediately to assure to ensure that you're not going to violate that standard again in the future. If you recall in chapter six I said the leverage is access when someone begins to link pain to something. With enough pain link to a behavior, that, pers that person will eventually change it, and the strongest leverage is the pain we can give ourselves. Guilt is the ultimate leverage for many people in changing behavior. Changing a behavior. However, some people try to deal with their guilt by denying and suppressing it. Unfortunately, this rarely works. Guilt does not go away. It only come back. It only comes back stronger. The other extreme is to surrender to surrender to and wallow in guilt, where we begin to just accept the pain and experience learned helplessness. This is not the purpose of guilt. It's designed again to drive us to action to create a change. People fail to understand this and often feel to remorse full about something. To remorse 
remorseful, to remorseful about something they once did that they allow themselves to feel inferior for the rest of their lives. That is not the message of guilt. It's there to make sure you either avoid behaviors out of your certainty that they lead, that they'll lead to guilt, or if you're already violated your standard, it's there to induce enough pain within you to get yourself to recommit to a higher standard once again. Once you address your whole behavior that you feel guilt guilty about, thought and your sincere though and yeah guilt about thought and your sincere consistent then move on. Solution acknowledge that you have in fact violated a critical standard you hold for yourself. Absolutely commit yourself to making sure this behavior will never happen again in the future. Rehearse in your mind how if you could leave it again you could deal with the same situation you feel guilty about in a way this uh, that is consistent with your own highest personal standard. Big uh, ma personal mastery. As you commit beyond a shadow of a doubt that you'll never allow the behavior to occur again, you have the right to let go of the guilt. Guilt has then served its purpose to drive you to hold a higher standard in the future. Utilize it, don't wallow in it. Some people manage to beat themselves up mentally and emotionally because they are constantly failing to meet standards that they hold for themselves in virtually every area of life. As a result, most of the people experience a feeling of inadequacy. This feeling is unworthiness occurs. This feeling of unworthiness occurs anytime we feel we can't do something we should be able to do. The challenge, of course, is that often we have completely unfair rule for determining where, whether we're inadequate or not. First, understand the message in that inadequacy is giving you. The message, the message is that you don't presently have a level of skill necessary for the task at end. It's telling you that you need more information, understanding, strategies, tools, or confidence. The solution: simply ask yourself, is this really an appropriate emotion for me to feel in this situation? Am I really inadequate? Inadequate? Or do I have to change the way I'm perceiving things? Maybe you've convinced yourself that in order to feel adequate, you have to go out on the dance floor and outdo Michael Jackson. This is probably an inappropriate perception. If your feeling is justified, the message of inadequacy is that you need to find a way to do something better that you've done it before. That that you've done that you've done it before. The solution is in this case is also obvious. Whenever you feel inadequate, appreciate the encouragement to improve. Remind yourself that you're not perfect and that you and that you don't need to be. With this realization, you can begin to feel adequate. The moment you decide to commit yourself to can, I, constant and never-ending improvement in this area, find a role model, someone who is effective in this area in which you feel inadequate, and get some coaching from them. Each one, teach one. Just the process of deciding to master this area of your life and making even the smallest amount of progress will turn a person who is inadequate into a person who is learning. This emotion is critical because when someone feels inadequate, they tend to fall into the trap of learned helplessness and they begin to see the problem as being a permanent one with themselves. There's no greater lie you could tell yourself. You're not you're not inadequate, you may be undertrained or unskilled in a particular area, 
but you're not inadequate. The capability for greatness in anything is within you, even now. Rise and shine, Jah people. I'm out.